Hey everybody, how's it going? Alex here, and today we've got another demo, and this time it's e-signatures. So it's a very popular request. A lot of people need to have an e-signature workflow implemented in their Airtable DB. So yeah, today we're gonna take a look at how to create a simple NDA workflow or a signature for an NDA workflow. We're gonna be using Make, we're gonna be using obviously Airtable and Pandadoc to get this done. So in our typical fashion, as always, we're going to go through the design of the database. Next, we're going to take a look at how we've set up our automations. And uh, yeah, and that will uh, be that. So let's do it. All right. So let's go ahead and create the draft for the NDA. It's generating now. And the draft should be ready in a sec. Draft is ready. Let's go ahead and request our signatures it's preparing and the document is now sent signing my part <laughs> so my part is signed now the second part is now ready to sign I'm signing the second part and as soon as I sign it all right admin has signed there we go now all the signatures have been collected and the document has been completely signed and we're good to go all right so let's get started with the database design now i've already just generated an nda and as you can see this is, has all been completed and we're going to go through a proper full uh not cut demo step by step because i think it's important for everybody to understand you know, kind of like what is happening and to see it play out in real time. But yeah, for now, the database is extremely simple. I'm uh, going to put myself down there. So this is just like an HR database I've uh, come up with where we have uh, a bunch of candidates, jobs and job applications. And as part of that job application, we want to be able to create an NDA uh, review it and when we're ready request for signatures just you know two clicks and all the data of course will be populated in the document based on our Airtable data so yeah let's uh, take a look at candidates nothing really much to call home about here just a simple name email address uh, some notes and uh, yeah our link to job applications simple as that then we have jobs basic jobs i'm planning to do more um, videos on this sort of topic with uh, hr you know hiring candidate sourcing that sort of thing so yeah i'm just preparing <laughs> uh, the database for that and uh, yeah and finally we have job applications where we have our uh, little name which essentially just concatenates jobs uh, space dash space and then the candidate then we have our link to jobs simple as that we have our link to the candidate themselves because this is essentially a junction table you know we're marrying the two linked records and that marriage creates in its own right a whole new entity in this case a job application then we have uh, our nda checkbox we have a long text called nda processing which is basically the system giving us prompts to what has happened and just giving us a timestamp so where we know what is going on basically at any given time then we have our nda attachment field where you know everybody wants this kind of thing they want to be able to have the pdf physically in their database so yeah that's all there with uh, the signature certificates and whatnot so Next, we have our request NDA e-signature, which is essentially the trigger to start collecting signatures. I want to be able to have the ability, in other words, to create the draft. And then when I'm ready and everything's cool and I've verified that all the addresses and names and such are all good, then generate the e-signature so that was the design for the database nothing too tricky so now let's go and take a look at how the automations are designed because there's quite a few things to go over there all right 
Guys, so I think the first thing that we need to do in terms of getting the show on the road with this NDA is to actually jump into Pandadoc. So yeah, here, the first thing that you really need to do is to upload a template for all of your PDF. You probably have it ready. The way to do that is to go into templates, create, I believe, and then just drag and drop your PDF in here. The next thing, as soon as it has uploaded, you will be taken into that document, typically. Uh, here is one I created earlier. So most of this, as you can see, is not editable uh, because it was a flat PDF where I had some blank spaces like the date, the name of the candidate, which these are custom variables that I'm going to show you how to add in a sec. But yeah, essentially, um, it was just a flat two page PDF, right? Where I want to say that here is the signature for the admin. Here's the signature for the client uh, or candidate. And the rest of it is like super, uh, super basic, just a PDF that I have. Now, uh, speaking about uh, the variables like the today's date, for instance, or the candidate name and such, how do we add those? Because those are placeholders, which we will get Airtable data into. So it's very easy. Just click on variables, press add variable, and let's call this test variable, add variable. And here is my test variable. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste. I want to be able to add just a simple text. Here we go. And now I can paste that variable. Um, so for instance, let's say I want to add that test variable that I've created. Here it is. Where's my test variable? Copy that, paste that in. And that's it. That's all you really need. So let's say I wanted to add another variable there for the test. That's that. That's all you really need to know. All you have to do is just create a bunch of these variables. Uh, for instance, the day date is my variable name for the placement of the date, uh, the candidate name, the candidate address. Make sure that you leave plenty of space so that, you know, it, we're taking care of longer addresses or longer uh, candidate names. Um, then how to add a signature again, super easy content. Um, what is the signature signature field? There it is. So add a signature field, then you can assign who you want it to be signed by. Yeah, so that's easy as that. Just make sure that you add two and you assign one to the client or candidate one to the admin. So simple as this, that's all we have to do here in Pandadoc. So now let's jump into Airtable and I'll take a look at how to set up the rest of the automations. Okay. So now that we've got the Pandadoc setup out of the way, let's take a look at the first step. And I mean, let me just say that we have three steps. We have first the generation of the NDA draft itself, which will happen using this uh, create NDA button. The second step is to send it out for signatures. And the third step is to actually listen for changes in the document. In other words, if there is a change in, in the signatures, the system will tell us like admin signed, candidate signed, and the document has been completed. Yeah, this step number three, just to clarify, we are not triggering this in any way ourselves. It is being triggered by the people who are signing and by the changes in the document status, for instance. So that's that. Uh, let's take a look at step one, which is fairly simple. So the first thing that we need to do is essentially to generate the draft, as I said earlier. And let's jump into automations as we have. The first thing to do is create NDA. The first thing to do is just make sure that this is our trigger. So when uh, NDA is checked, then we're going to run our script. And if you have been following the channel, we use exactly the same script all day long, which is this one. Uh, and just make sure that you change this parameter over here, which is your webhook that you're going to generate from make. Uh, then record ID in your variable, in your input variable, and the value should be the Airtable record ID. 
Airtable record ID should be the value that we print in there. So yeah, that's it in terms of the Airtable side. Let's jump in into the make side. Now here we have our webhook. So we need to copy this particular link and paste it into our script. This is what I was referring to earlier. And next we are getting that record. We're getting the job application from the job applications table from over here. We're updating that record with NDA processing, just this little hard-coded text saying generating draft NDA agreement. And then um, I'm just formatting the now to uh, look like this. And then finally, I'm getting the candidate record. Uh, so matching the candidate from uh, module number four, which is over here, just picking this and choosing number one so that we can actually get all the data about that particular candidate, which is here. Next, we have a router and then we have two cases. The first case always gets generated. The second one actually has a filter against it. So this second case does, I'm going to get this out of the way. It basically deletes a previously generated Pandadoc because you don't want to create uh, loads of garbage documents and store them in your Pandadoc account. Uh, it's just, you know, good house housekeeping <laughs> to do that. So essentially, yeah, uh, the principle here is that from module number two, if NDA underscore PDID doesn't exist, which, oh, I've forgotten to mention that. So we actually have a few more fields. So this field is the lookup for the email from the candidate and um, NDA PDID is just an extra little field that we need in order to store the Pandadoc ID in our database. It's really useful for a number of reasons. And yeah, one of those reasons is if it already exists and we're generating a new draft, it will take that PDID from number two and will go ahead and delete it from Pandadoc. Now, uh, the creation workflow is also quite simple. There's really not much to it. We first create our document and the document name is just basically I'm replacing any spaces with underscores, as you can see here, and I'm adding a unique ID to the end of that document name. It looks a bit like, uh, let me see if I can find an example. Yeah, like this. John underscore Simmons on underscore F5753. It adds like a little license plate basically to that, to that, to that document name. The next thing to do is we have our mutual non-disclosure agreement. That is our template. We need to choose that. Next, we have our tokens. Now, tokens are also the the variables that we were just discussing in uh, Pandadoc. For some reason, they're called tokens in one place and variables in the other. But yeah, those are the variables. So next we map the email from uh, our candidate to the client email. I've hard coded my email to the admin email so that I always get it. The candidate address token is the address from again, uh, module number six. The candidate name is the name from module number six. The test variable is something that we've just created. I don't think it's uh, there. And I might as well actually delete it from my list of variables. Next, we have token today date. And again, I'm just formatting now in this format of day, month, year, separated by slashes. And I think that's it. The next and final thing is to actually add the document meta in the document metadata to add the applic the AT underscore application ID, which is just a basic field name that I've come up with for the actual application. So it's important for us to link the application job application to the document and make sure that on the generated document, there is some kind of a, of a link back to the application. So that is literally what I'm doing here. And you'll see how this is useful in the future. So that's that. Next, we have a sleep module where you need to set it to be about two to, to be in for about two to three, two to three seconds, because sometimes between uh, creating a document and downloading that document 
as a PDF, which is what we want, it doesn't have enough time. So this particular module will crash. So and, but in order to prevent it uh, from crashing, just put the sleep uh, module over there. Next, we have download document, which we're basically just downloading it. Just pass the document ID here from uh, module number five. Next, I'm using the upload a buffer file to a temporary URL from uh, one SAS co feel free to just sign up for this service. It's extremely useful, super cheap. Yeah. And it just helps very often. And this kind of kinds of workflows where you have a buffer of data of binary data, like so that comes as the payload from Padadoc, you need sometimes the ability to upload buffer files into it and generate a temporary URL so that then you can update Airtable and essentially get the application from module number two, the application ID. And then we bring in the document ID from number five here that we've just generated. Uh, then, uh, then just print, you know, hey, go with a check emoji, draft ready, temporary file URL that you'll get from number nine here in the NDA, literally this field. And you also have to give it a file name. And I'm just taking the file name that I got from my, uh, from module number seven dot PDF. So that when it lands, it just looks like that John Simmons and so forth. And that's it. That's it for uh, the first step. So without any further ado, I'm just going to clear all of this so that we can run this together and see how this step behaves. Uh, I'm just going to run this and I'm going to create NDA. I'm going to hide for uh, like for the moment. I'm just going to hide these lookups. And as you can see, it is now sleeping, downloading temporary buffer storage. And there we go. So now we have our NDA right here. And we also have our NDA PandaDoc ID there as well. Now let's take a look at the second step. Right, so now that we've completed step number one, let's discuss step number two, which is very easy. Same way of triggering the automation, just confirm and request signatures. As you can see here, my second trigger, the same principle, you know, when the request NDA e signature is checked, then run the script. The script is exactly the same. Well, with the exception of the webhook, but everything else is basically the same. So I'm not going to go into detail on that. As soon as that runs, we have our second step and the second step is much, much easier than the first. All we have to do is obviously, I mean, you're fetching the webhook from here and you're putting that in the automation. Next, we are getting the job application like so. Next, we are getting, uh, we're updating that job application in the NDA processing we're just basically adding this hard coded text to say that we're preparing the NDA agreement. And we're also printing the NDA processing part at the very bottom, like so. That's it. Next, we're getting the record of the candidate again. And in this case, the most difficult part about this step is to create an API call, like uh, jump into PandaDoc make an API call, you obviously need to, and I should have mentioned it earlier, but you obviously need to create a connection with PandaDoc, but that is very easy to do. Just follow the steps that make uh, provides to do that. If you don't know, just click on this little question mark. So yeah, what you need to do is just input this as I've done here and make sure that you um, substitute this little, like right after documents forward slash just make sure that you input the P NDA PDID, which you can fetch from your uh, second module. And then following that, just forward slash send. Then uh, you have to do this. You have to choose the method of post. Then right here in the body, I mean, the headers will be prefilled for you. But in the body, it is important that you follow this particular structure as I have created it here. Now, in terms of the subject, you can add any subject you like. In terms of the message, you can input any message you like. Just make sure that everything's in within 
make these quotes so that it's very clear that this is a string. A silent, make sure that this is false. Forwarding is allowed and forwarding with reassigning is also allowed. I mean, you can set these to false if you want to, but that's completely up to you. For me, for now, I've just set them to true. Okay. Now, the final part, and what this does is essentially sending that document out to be signed. And yeah, that's it. If, uh, if everything goes well with this particular API call, you'll get a status 200. One minor thing that I think is important to note is in Pandadoc, just make sure that you have set the signing order of the document. Because if you don't, it will... I think first go to the admin, first go to the client, one of the two. And it's at least to me very important that it is that I have control. And you can do that by just checking this and then uh, dragging the signing order just by you know click and drag. So yeah, that's one important thing to note. <clears throat> Finally, I think we have one more step here where we're just setting that we've, you know, we've basically sent the document out for signatures so that whoever is using the Airtable database knows what's going on. So let's go ahead and run this. There we go. API. And now we should have um, our, there we go, document sent for signatures. Awesome. So that has worked. And now I'm going to, I'm going to bring my two uh, emails uh, so you can see how this uh, has now been, uh, the, how this has reached the mailboxes of, uh, of the two people that we need. So here we go. This is the first person open document. And I want you to see in parallel how the second inbox will get notified. I'm the admin on this end, and I'm going to be signing this now. There we go. That's the admin signing. Accept and sign. Finish. Now, in this case, instantly, pretty much, we're going to get the document sent for signatures. You're going to see it updates to saying admin signed and and the signature is already there which is awesome now i'm going to pull up my other inbox and you can see how it instantly has come up in the candidates mailbox i open this up and i'm just going to have it over here so you can see what's going on in airtable at the same time so start signing sign it accept finish and that is now done and in here you'll see that is it's now all completed and if i open up my document i can see both signatures there and my signature certificate which is cool perfect so this brings us to step number three which is exactly the step that makes sure that we get all of the information as it happens, uh, as soon as the admin signs, or as soon as the candidate signs, or as soon as the whole document is completed, we want to make sure that that gets reflected as soon as it happens in Airtable, which is what we've just witnessed. So what you need to begin with uh, for step number three, as, we, as I like to refer to it, is this watch documents uh, module from Pandadoc, and it's this one over here, Watch Documents Instant Asset. Next, you need to give me some some events. So the event type should equal to recipient underscore completed. Once you've done that, then you can get the document just by mapping the ID over here. Next step is to get it to sleep. And again, because there has been changes to the document, i.e. somebody signed it, we want and we want to make we want to fetch that download document. I'm using exactly the same process as it, as I did here. These four uh, modules in step number three, only that you know in this case I'm slightly changing the beginning. But yeah, sleep for another three seconds, then download the document, then uh, upload to buffer 
as we did previously. And finally, we're getting the job application and we're getting the job application this time. Remember last time we spoke about metadata. So yeah, this is where the metadata gets used because whenever we fetch that document, we can also see the metadata over here. And within our metadata, we can see that there's the AT application ID because that way I can very easily identify this document that just got signed. Which application does it belong to? We've already set that up in step one when we were generating our drafts. So yeah, that way we're getting that particular thing. Next, we have recipients. So in this iterator, I'm placing my recipients array from module number four. I think it was somewhere over here. There it is. And then I'm saying has completed equals to true. So that filter is necessary. Next, I have an extra condition in my right after this router to say in, th in this first uh, route, because it will go first to the top route and then to the bottom one. So in the NDA processing, I want to make sure that the text does not contain admin signed. In that case, we're going to update the job application with admin sign because first the admin has to sign. And in the second case, in the second, uh, once the admin has signed, the candidate has to sign. So all I'm doing really here is saying, look, the ad if, if the admin hasn't signed it, it means that it's him signing. So in this case, all I'm really doing, I'm just basically saying in the NDA processing admin has signed and just mapping the uh, NDA processing data from module number 11 and just uploading my temporary file URL from uh, my buffer. Next, if it fails this filter, in other words, the admin at the words admin signed already exist. It means that this time around, it's our candidate who's who has signed. Again, we're fetching the job application one more time. And it's important that you do it here because we want to have the most up to date data possible because between this and this, something might have changed. So we want to fetch it one more time, like so, so fetch the job application. We want to make sure that the email is equal to the email from the candidate has completed is true. NDA processing does not contain candidate signed. And if that's the case, then we update the application with candidate signed and we bring in the temporary file URL as well from the buffer. And finally, we process one more update with a document completed. And that is the end of that. So yeah, guys, hopefully you have enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see something else, if you want me to uh, explore this further. And yeah, I'm looking forward to the next one. Cheers.